What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto What If. If you end up liking the video please consider subscribing, it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my second channel so if you want some more what ifs go check out my other channels, and with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. Three weeks had passed since the conclusion of the Akatsuki invasion of Suna in which the organization of S-Class Missing Mean led by Abito Uchiha was destroyed and the Kanoha Imperial conflict in which a group of high-ranking shinobi led by two of the San Mean picked a fight with the Emperor and his wife the Emperor's consort resulting in the deaths of 16 ANBU Black Ops the maiming of several high-ranking Jounin and the death of Kakashi Ataki upon their return to the West Naruto had taken. Abito Uchiha to the sword which was followed by Kurama incinerating his body as a final indignity Naruto had pissed on the ashes in the month following that incident Kanoha's standing as the strongest of the shinobi villages in the east has plummeted Suna had taken Kanoha's spot as the strongest of the shinobi villages with both Kanoha and IWA tied for number two with Kanoha knocked down a peg Naruto and Inada. Initiated Imperial Protocol 110482 originally called Operation, Kill the Bacchus as a joke. Between Naruto and Hinata Imperial Protocol 110482 also known as Operation, Scorched Leaf was a series of plans developed by Naruto and Hinata which would in the end lead to Kanoa's destruction sending in his army would be too tedious for Naruto which is why he came up with this plan once Naruto and Hinata became the rulers of the empire the plans were revised and revamped following their return to Kim and Naruto and Hinata had put their plan into action a week after returning to Kim and Naruto had sent out a series of scrolls detailing not only the failed Akatsuki invasion of Suna and the confrontation between the Empire and the Kanoha Shinobi but also details in regards to the Akatsuki Abito Uchiha and Operation Munai the results were as Naruto and Hinata had expected which had damaged Kanoha even further sowing mistrust in the leaf of course Tsunade and the Fire Lord denied the accusation saying that what Naruto was doing was out of spite but seeing as how they had favored A. Hero over a potential traitor their denials fell on deaf ears in response to the Imperial Nation's actions Tsunade Jiraiya and the Fire Demio responded by revealing that the Western Empire had the Jinchuriki in their possession and that they had fought in the Suna Akatsuki War hoping to use the political pressure from the Demios and the other Kages to force Naruto into surrendering the Jinchuriki back to their respective villages however Tsunade was a day late and a Rio short the Demios which had the major villages had already knew that Naruto and Hinata had long since retrieved the Jinchuriki and allowed him to do so in exchange for a promise of non-aggression on his end should the Kages raise a stink over the loss of the Jinchuriki then the Demios will pull them back in line this did not sit well with Tsunade and Jiraiya Kanai the Kuro no Sato Fire Country Jiraiya walked into the office the one-armed Sanin's expression was grim and has been grim since the fateful mission. Into Suna the stump on where his arm used to be served as a reminder of what Naruto had become Tsunade looked up from her paperwork well did you hear anything she demanded bad news all around replied Jiraiya from what my informants have told me it appears that the brat is two steps ahead of us the Demios have long known that Naruto had taken the Jinchuriki in fact they allowed him to do so in exchange of a promise of non-aggression on his end which means that their respective Kages can't do. Anything Tsunade seeded what about Naruto and Inada's bingo book entries Jiraiya shook his head they were voided out the Gaki and the Hyuga have been recognized as rulers of a sovereign nation which as you know carries automatic diplomatic immunity honestly I never expected Naruto be be this cunning whatever he thinks if he knows how to counterattack he looked at his stump of an arm before turning back to his former teammate but we still have one final card left to play Jiraiya Tsunade said. The Kage Summit think it will work Jiraiya asked Kanoha is no longer the strongest of the shinobi villages Tsunade said Ataki is dead guy is a cripple and both Sarutobi and Yamato are in rehab aside from the fact that we lost four clans and Orochimaru is launching hit and run attacks over the border thinning out our numbers even further now that he is not to worry about the Akatsuki you know what they are calling Naruto now seeing as how he was responsible for the destruction of the Akatsuki. They are calling him the Akatsuki killer I don't care what they call him Tsunade snapped he is a threat to not only Kanoha but to all of fire country I agree Jiraiya said right now my informants are looking into the Pekora merchant house branches in wind wave T and spring so far all we got are trade routes nothing concrete whereas the Kage summit being held iron country Tsunade replied General Mifune has agreed to play as host and mediator to the other Kages the meeting is to take place. 
three weeks from now you will remain here as acting Kage in my stead while I take two bodyguards as per the conditions set by Mifune who are you taking with you asked Jiraiya Danzu has offered two of his private security corps to accompany me but I seriously don't trust him Kiba Inazuka is still out on the inactive list so I will take the Inazuka matriarch and Sakura Haruno as she was the least wounded shinobi out of the bunch that Brad has been lucky for a while now but this time is luck. Will run out once I turn the other Kages against him and the Jinchuriki under his control. Sonade huffed the tailed beasts were given to the other shinobi villages by my grandfather in order to keep the peace once they were tamed by extension. The Jinchuriki are the property of the Senju clan, which means that they belong to me. That brat will have no other option but to surrender the Jinchuriki over to me, or else he will suffer the consequences. Jiraiya sighed if this was the same brat that was. A gen and then Naruto would not be a match for us now he is an unknown Tsunade he is no longer the same brat that sensei wanted to be Kanoa's weapon because he is an unknown that makes him even more dangerous he gestured to his stump look what he did to me look what he did to a sumagai and Yamato Ataki is dead and he was one of our strongest shinobi he could have killed us back in Suna but chose not to and it was not because that this was his former home are you saying that he spared all? Of us for a specific reason Tsunade asked it looks that way the one-armed sage replied maybe he wants us to suffer or maybe he wants to destroy us himself the kid was known to be unpredictable he made the impossible possible he'd beaten the Inazuka heir and the Hyuga prodigy in the Chunin exams hell from what Sasuke had told me he unlocked the power of the Rinnegan during their first battle at the valley the fact that he can fight without relying on it as a crutch makes him even more dangerous. Then Itachi Abito and Sasuke combined Jiraiya remembered Naruto's words that day in Suna after he and Hinata had came out on top following their confrontation you call this hatred I call it retribution you say this is vengeance this is justice but this is only the beginning you had this is the beginning of the end for the leaf go back to Kanoa and tell them that the dead last has returned tell them that as the yellow flash brought Kanoa's rise to power the emperor of the six paths will bring. About its reckoning you think he could reach out to Orochimaru Tsunade asked Jiraiya shook his head I don't think so I think it's safe to say that he is no more of a fan of that snake than the both of us in the meantime I'm heading for the fire capital to update the fire demio on the situation afterward I'm going to check on some of my contacts and Tanzuka Tsunade nodded and dismissed Jiraiya Imperial Complex Palace Gardens Naruto Uzumaki Namikes watched with a smile as Hinata and Ten Ten exchanged gossip whilst sitting in the shade of the Sakura trees Hizashi and Minato were in their respective laps while Hayashi and Niji fussed over the two children he looks just like you Mifun said standing at the emperor's side fatherhood suits you I'm glad you think so general the emperor replied his expression had gotten serious as he turned to the old samurai in spite of everything this was not a social call there is a reason why you decided to come to Kimin rather than contact my informants and spies in the east several days earlier General Mifune and a group of bodyguards had visited Kimin Suncher had received his longtime rival warmly even going as far as to holding a feast in his rival's honor at his estate on Friday the day of the local tournament Suncher and Mifune had fought in the arena Naruto Inada and the Imperial Council were among those in attendance the battle had ended in a draw but had left the old men in good spirits this was Naruto's second encounter with the Iron Country Chief the first time he had met Mifune was through Eiji Kibagami when Mifune visited Kim in the first time to sign a trade agreement which allowed the Empire to establish a Pekora outpost in Iron Country in exchange for reduced prices for their goods the second time Mifune had came to the Imperial Complex he had some information for the Emperor and Empress Consort information Regarding Kanoha once again your intuition proves to be correct Mifune confirmed your actions in Suna towards your former village has caught the eye of the other villages the Godem Hokage has called for a summit of the Kages I have been asked to host it not to mention playing the role of mediator and you agreed to do so yes and it just so happens that the summit falls exactly on the same day as you and your wife are due for your annual inspection of the Pekora merchant branch in Iron Country which is one month from now Naruto nodded in understanding are you suggesting that I crash the summit general the old man smirked unofficially yes officially you know the rules interesting Naruto said you said that only two bodyguards can come with me if you nodded looks like you can expect my wife and I to the summit general Naruto said thanks for the information inside the imperial palace later so what did Mifune wanted to talk with you about Inada asked as she put Minato to bed for the Night their one-year-old son had so much energy and now he was tucked out Minato let out a cute little yawn before settling in for the night Naruto watched as Inada tended to their son Mifune dropped some interesting news in regards to the east he replied the old hag has called for a Kage summit Senju plans on trying to get the Kages on her side Inada said maybe even try and put pressure on us since they know we have the Jinchuriki here I was thinking the same thing Naruto said I knew there. 
was a reason why I married you Anata turned to her husband and smiled without me you would get into trouble and be very miserable so what do you plan on doing she asked the look on Naruto's face said it all you're going to crash the summit aren't you yup Anata pouted I see that you are not going to change your mind well since you're going I might as well come along there's this Chong Sam that I want to wear for the occasion, what were the conditions that Mifune had set two bodyguards can come along so I will bring Mochizuki and Sana Anata nodded Naruto back in Suno when we confronted Tsunade and the others why didn't you kill Sasuke why did you spare his life instead I know he shoved a Chidori into your chest during the retrieval mission but why not just kill him and be done with it I think Yujito's training has rubbed off on you Naruto mused as he walked over to the nightstand drawer you should have been a hellcat instead of a medic Neen unlocking the seals which kept the drawer locked he opened it and pulled out two black books one containing the insignia of the leaf the other containing the insignia of Danza's root A and B U Naruto began to explain the first time I returned to the leaf I assassinated Hanmira and Koharu I got the first book from Danza detailing his crimes he had done in the name of the leaf the second book I stole from the Hokage's office when I snuck back in to retrieve my parents ashes after spiking her sake with laxatives blowing up the Hokage Monument was a bonus Hanada began to leaf through the pages of the Hokage Black Book and when were you going to tell me about this she asked I did tell you remember Sarutobi and those two idiot students of his have plenty of secrets oh Hanada continued to flip through the pages then she stopped son of a bitch Naruto knew that tone in her voice in an instant if Hanada spoke in a tone that showed she was pissed violence and in the most extreme cases death would most likely ensue Hanada looked angry and she had a very good reason why Sarutobi Jiraiya and those two relics had a hand in my attempted kidnapping the incident with Kumo Anata nodded Sarutobi tried to sell me out what Anata was speaking of was the incident known as the Hyuga affair Anata had nearly been kidnapped by the Kumo ambassador had it not been for her father who had killed the kidnapper Kumo had threatened war and retaliation unless Kanoha surrendered the Hyuga clan had Hizashi had went in Hayashi's place as the caged bird seal would rob Kumo of learning of the Baikogen and because he was Hayashi's twin brother so Kumo did not know the difference well it's a good thing that he died while fighting Orochimaru didn't he Naruto said as he looked through Danza's black book you still haven't answered my question about Sasuke Inada said turn to page 49 Inada did as she was asked operation downfall the Uchiha was planning a coup d'etat Naruto said as Inada had read the blackout orders Sarutobi Danza those Two old bastards and Jiraiya had ordered Itachi to butcher the entire clan save for Sasuke what they don't know is that Abito had helped in the slaughter the reason why Sasuke is still alive is simple Heim Kanoha's destruction will not come from us it's going to come from Sasuke and Ada finished by having Kanoha and Fire Country focus their attention on me they will not suspect the Uchiha of stabbing them in the back Kanoha knows that the Imperial Nation is a threat to them Danza tried to assassinate us and failed Tsunade lost face when she attacked us and Suna Orochimaru will do his part in keeping pressure on Kanoha more than likely he knows about the both of us but since we hate Kanoha as much as he does he won't do anything that would cause us to turn our attention to him Naruto sat down beside Hanada even back when we were under Ataki Sasuke sees himself as an elite because of his clan name and because of his Sharingan what he values is power and influence if Kanoha does not give him what he wants or if it appears to be weak he will go elsewhere for the power that he thinks he so rightfully deserves and seeing as how I the former dead last of the cell is clearly stronger than he is that is something that will eat at him which is why he tried to go to Orochimaru the first time Hanada said when Naruto nodded Hanada continued and if he tries to defect to Orochimaru a second time Naruto grinned this time he would most likely succeed all Sasuke needs is a push in the right direction which is where these two black books come in but I don't plan on driving him to the snake just yet that won't happen until after the Imperial Kumite in two months time I will pit Sasuke against one of the four devs preferably against Reizu once Sasuke finds out that he is not as powerful as he fancies himself to be Naruto gestured to the two books he will find out the truth once I plant these inside his home that Kanoha has been using him as they once tried with me he will Run to Orochimaru only this time there will be no retrieval team to stop him as Orochimaru won't make the same mistake twice Hanada said Sasuke will flee to Orochimaru and seeing as how Kanoha was responsible for the destruction of his clan he will bring down hell upon the leaf she chuckled dryly and we will watch the festivities from a safe distance Naruto said all we need is the popcorn and regardless of how the battle will play out be it Kanoha ekes out a victory or the snake destroys Kanoha. We move in and finish the leaf off once and for all what about the Sanin had they honored my parents final wishes instead of betraying me then this would not have gone as far as it had did her husband replied their time is over and they don't realize it elsewhere in the east the aforementioned Sanin and Sasuke Uchiha sneezed at the same time the ominous feeling of dread. 
had crept up their spines as if the death god himself had sealed their fates Iron Country Iron Country was the only country in the elemental countries which had highly trained samurai instead of shinobi the samurai there were descended from samurai who had emigrated from the war-torn west in search of a more peaceful life the other shinobi villages had left it alone as the samurai were not only tough but Iron Country had a long-standing policy and not to interfere in the other country's affairs. Given its neutrality the country was a perfect choice to host the Kage Summit the location of the summit was held inside the Iron Capital with General Mifune playing as host and mediator as expected the major players in the elemental countries were present for the meeting from Mist, Gode Mizukage Meitarumi and her bodyguards Ao and Chojuro from IWA, Sandame Tsuchika Jinoki of both scales and his bodyguards his granddaughter Kuratsuchi and Akatsuchi from Kanoha, Gode Mokage Tsunade. Senju and her bodyguards Tsume Inazuka and Sakura Haruno from Kumo, Godame Reiki Johatsu Katsuraji and her bodyguards which happened to be Odo Shinobi disguised as Kumo Jounin from Suna, Godame Kasakage Gara of the Sands and his bodyguards Tamari and Kankuro also present was the Emperor and Empress Consort of the Imperial Nation Pakora Merchant House Iron Country Branch The Pakora Merchant House's Iron Branch was a walled compound located several blocks away from where the Kage Summit Meeting was being held A.G. Kibagami was instrumental in getting a trading alliance with Iron Country as he had relatives living there inside one of the offices within the compound Naruto and Inada Namikaze were finishing up their preparations as this was a formal affair Naruto and Inada were dressed for the occasion as Naruto had long since stopped wearing orange as attire, was mostly black having embraced the western style of clothing, vest pants and boots the tight collared shirt was white. His long coat hung on a rack as did the black Kage style hat Hanada was also finishing her own preparations she was dressed in a red Chongsam dress with a black lotus pattern which showed off her curvaceous figure a red rose was tucked inside her hair she wore no makeup which enhanced her beauty the couple along with their elite guard had arrived in Iron Country via the demon's gate hours before the Kages were due to arrive as there was no place for the imperial nation's airship to land. Following the inspection of the Pekora compound Naruto and Inada made their preparations to crash the Kage summit Inada turned to her husband who had just slipped on his long coat ready Naruto nodded as he placed the Kage style hat on his head ready the Kage summit a massive council chamber consisting of a round table in the center of the room iron samurai guarded the room making sure that everything remained civil between the five Kages and their respective bodyguards from Mifune's left going. Clockwise sat Godame Mizukage Turumi Godame Okage Senju Sandame Suchikage Anoki Godame Kazakage Gara of the Sand and last Godame Reikage Katsuraji flanking them with their respective bodyguards there was a space that was directly opposite of Tsunade which was empty for those of you who do not know who I am Mifune began I am Mifune leader of Iron Country and general of the samurai forces here on behalf of the people of Iron Country I welcome you to my home I will be acting as mediator. For this meeting of the Kages he turned to Tsunade Godame Okage you have the floor thank you General Tsunade said clearing her throat she began to speak fellow Kages the threat of the Akatsuki is passed with its destruction but there is a new threat on the rise a threat that can not only destabilize the fragile balance of the elemental countries but can destroy them Gara's eyes narrowed as did Mays they knew exactly what the Godame was speaking of I am talking about the unified western. Empire and its so-called leaders Naruto Uzumaki and Hanada Hyuga Tsunade finished from what Jiraiya has told me following his visit to the west the imperial nation's military might is far more stronger than the those of our villages combined what the east has seen with the destruction of the Akatsuki was nothing but a sample of what Uzumaki can muster I disagree with your claims Lady Okage Gara said, coming to the defense of his friend Emperor Namikaze is not a threat to any one of us here. Your opinion of him has been biased ever since the day he was born your actions in banishing him following the retrieval mission of the Uchiha has shown that indeed Anoki said knowing full well that the Emperor was the son of the infamous Yellow Flash as well as of the circumstances surrounding Uzumaki's banishment despite the stone's issues with the Yellow Flash it makes no sense in banishing a genin when he was successful in completing his mission while giving a pardon to the genin who Attempted to defect to a potential traitor had this taken place in IWA the Uchiha runt would have been executed Sharingan be damned second had Uzumaki had any ill will towards any of us may continue then he would have invaded the east a long time ago I agree with my Suna counterpart your opinion of him is flawed as exploits in the east are of public knowledge it was through him that the leaf gained its many alliances ironic as it by the Uchiha that they were taken away Tsunade gritted her. 
teeth as she balled her hands into fists that part was true in any event Katsuragi from what I have observed Uzumaki is not a threat to any of us we all have heard of the reports coming from Suna yourself Jiraiya and several high-ranking shinobi confronted and fought the emperor and empress in the village streets Anoki cackled oh I would give anything to have been there the look on your faces when the gaki that you Jiraiya and all of Kanoha had written off as worthless must have been priceless. The QB Jinchuriki the dead last now discovered to be the Emperor of the West add the fact that both he and his wife had humbled you and your shinobi are a bonus humbled Tsunade repeated rising from her seat humbled 16 of my ANBU are dead Kakashi Ataki the last of the unnamed students is dead Jiraiya my teammate lost his arm in his hands one of my shinobi had his back broken in such a way that not even I could fix it and there are the wounded you want to pick a fight with me. Senju Anoki taunted hopping to his feet you really shouldn't Kanoha is not looking very good now you're no longer the strongest of the villages not after your actions in Suno which had left a black eye upon the leaf Mifune cleared his throat getting the attention of the two Kagis as silent glare told them to stand down of which the Sandame and the Godame did behind Anoki Kuratsuchi and Akatsuchi grinned personally I would rather fight that brat who calls himself emperor instead of you. Tsunade said he is nothing without that title or the Rinnegan I underestimated him the last time it will not happen again you really should be careful what you wish for Godame Okage a voice said from the door causing everyone to turn to the now open doors it may just backfire on you in the most extreme way stepping into the room long coat fluttering behind him was the emperor and empress of the imperial nation behind them were two of their bodyguards a woman who was dressed similar to Tsunade. With tattoos and a Saizibushi level Anabugeisha identified by her khaki flak vest as a member of the Hellcats Mifune rose from his chair Emperor Namakes Empress Namakes you honor my home with your presence may I ask what you and your wife are doing here he asked already knowing the answer to the question Anata and I are here on the tail end of my inspection tour of the Pekora merchant houses in the East Naruto explained smoothly as per to imperial tradition we have come to pay our respects to the current ruler of the country he looked around the room studying the five kages and their bodyguards it appears that my wife and I have come at an unexpected time quite the contrary Mifune said the topic was about the both of you and the western empire yes emperor Tsunade said pronouncing Naruto's title with sarcasm we have some questions we would like answered Naruto looked at his wife who nodded of course he said there's nothing wrong with a small chat very good for the soul two more chairs were brought in and placed beside the godame rakage Naruto and Hinata walked over and took their seats Benisato and Sana standing behind the emperor and empress Naruto removed his hat and placed it on the table as with the other Kage Sanade was doing her very best not to try and knock his head off but she managed to keep her composure for those of you who don't know who I am or to those who are meeting me for the first time Naruto began I am Naruto Uzumaki Namake's former genin of Kanahagakura no Sato now the first sovereign emperor of the unified western empire and I am his wife Hinata continued empress consort Hinata Hyuga Namake so it's true what the Godame Okage says about you isn't it Anoki asked you are the son of Minato Namake's I am Naruto replied I am the legitimate heir of Minato Namikes and his wife Kushina Uzumaki Namikes he gestured to the two women behind him the women accompanying us are part of our elite guard Major Benisato Mochizuki and Sana Suncher what you may have heard about the Western Empire is more than likely true yes I was banished by the Godame Okage of Kanahagakura no Sato on trumped up charges solely because I am the Jinchuriki of the nine-tailed fox Hinata came with me at her father's behest in order to avoid being Branded with the caged bird seal Naruto could not reveal his trump card just yet saying that he was the former Jinchuriki of Kurama not yet for 5 minutes Naruto and Inada had told the meeting of the Kages of his trials and tribulations in the west first he had killed Rokabunji Oda said to be the strongest of the warlords he told them of the two years he had spent as a warlord unifying the continent and Inada, laying the foundation of what would be the imperial medic program which trained. Shinobi and Samurai he told them that following the unification wars he and Hinata were the undisputed rulers of the west that's it Naruto finished Hinata and I came from nothing we clawed our way to the top of the mountain the people recognized the both of us as the emperor and empress of the west clap clap everyone turned to Tsunade she was clapping sarcastically while Tsum and Sakura had amused looks on their faces bravo you can spin a wonderful story brad I think Jiraiya could use that in his next book Naruto leaned back in his seat and chuckled you of all people know that I never lie about my skills hag it just burns at you doesn't it to see Sarutobi's plans into conditioning me into being Kanoa's perfect weapon backfire that when you could not control me you banished me and sent the ANBU after me how does it feel knowing that Sarutobi is turning over in his grave at seeing his plans unfulfilled be careful Uzumaki Sanade warned rising from her seat I can just as easily crush 
You like a bug you tried remember Naruto replied and what was the end result oh that's right he ticked off on his fingers 16 anbu dead 3 maimed jown and 1 sanin missing an arm and kakashi ataki dead and that was me and hanada without trying i'm not the same gaki you once knew sanada you and all of kanoa should do well to remember that the akatsuki found out the hard way you should be thanking me senju for eliminating the akatsuki wiping them out was probably the most important Event in the history of the elemental countries and what is for you Anoki asked Naruto shrugged his shoulders Tuesday Anoki chuckled I like this kid granted that his father was the yellow flash the kid got spirit and IWA respects strength and honor that in the western herbal tea your merchants sell has done wonders for my bad back we are getting off subject here Sunade said there is still the matter of the Jinchuriki she leveled her gaze upon Naruto do you not deny that you have all of the Jinchuriki in your possession no I will not deny it Naruto said with the exception of General Mi and the Godame Kasakage I admit that I retrieved the Jinchuriki from here and offered them asylum within the empire before Tsunade could say anything Naruto continued I did this with the blessings and consent of the demios of earth lightning and water in exchange for a pledge of non-aggression on my end, and with me promising never to unleash the power of the Jinchuriki upon their country's end. Villages by taking the Jinchuriki out of the picture the playing field of the elemental countries has been reset and yet you used them in the war against the Akatsuki Sakura pointed out you are a liar and a hypocrite Naruto snapped his gaze upon his former teammate I'm sorry was I talking to you until I address you Aruno shut that hole between your nose and chin and reattach your lips to Senju's ass turning back to the assembled Kages he addressed them ignoring that Sun was holding Sakura back yes I had the Jinchuriki fight in the war with the Akatsuki but I honored my promise not to unleash them upon the villages or the elemental countries I asked them if they wanted some payback towards the Akatsuki and they agreed to come along the Demios may have agreed to your requests about the Jinchuriki but the fire Demio didn't and neither did I Tsunade said the tailed beasts and by extension the Jinchuriki are the property of the Senju clan my grandfather gave the bijou to the other shinobi villages as the granddaughter of Hashirama Senju you will hand over the bijou to me and since you hold the strongest of the bijou I demand that you abdicate your throne and hand yourself over to face the justice of the leaf let me think about that ah um no Naruto replied you dare refuse me Tsunade snarled a Senju and descendant of the six paths I do you seem to forget your history the Uzumaki are the direct descendants of the six paths sage the original Jinchuriki to the ten Tails he split the power of the bijou into nine beasts you claim that just because of your family name that the Jinchuriki and by extension Gara and myself are the property of the leaf in any case the bijou are not your property the Jinchuriki are under my protection the Senju and the Uchiha are not blood relatives to the six paths he adopted them and trained them but they are not of his blood Anoki Mei Mifune and Katsuragi. Watch this soap opera play out between the Emperor and the Godame. Hokage, I don't care what you think the Jinchuriki are the property of the Senju clan this is not open for discussion you will hand them over to me now Naruto's next question caught Tsunade off guard did you see my mother the same way wh what Tsunade stuttered it's a simple question you of all people know that my mother was the Jinchuriki to the fox as was your grandmother was before her Naruto continued you blamed me for her death when it was clear that it was Abito Uchiha who was responsible did you see my mother your niece as property to the Senju despite her status answer the question Senju I don't have to answer that Tsunade shot back of course you do Naruto replied his voice ice cold since as you claim that the Jinchuriki are the property of the Senju of which I too am a member of since Mito Uzumaki is a member of the Uzumaki clan. Did you see my mother as property of the leaf despite her being the Demio of Whirlpool as well as your niece answer me Senju the tension in the Room was thick the other four Kages watched as the standoff between the Godame Okage and the Emperor of the West stared the other down I see the answer in your eyes Senju despite the fact that my mother was the ruler of Whirlpool despite the fact you saw her as the daughter you never had you did see her as property Naruto said so what if I did Tsunade snarled Kushina was like a daughter to me yes I admit but she held the power of the QB, a power that belonged to the leaf to my clan not. Yours temper temper Senju Naruto child you really shouldn't get your blood pressure up at your age but if you continue down this road thinking that Kanoha is still the strongest of the shinobi villages when it is not seeing as how four of its clans and over 200 jounen are under my protection you are sadly mistaken the only reason why I haven't decided to wipe the leaf from the map is because seeing you and the village suffer because of your actions amuse me but make no mistake Senji you nor Kanoha nor the fire Demio are in no position to make demands of myself or of the imperial nation he slowly rose from his chair directing his killer intent at Tsunade and her bodyguards his eyes shimmering into the Rinnegan his voice becoming ice cold if you wish to go to war I'll be more than happy to oblige you you are
already on thin ice with me for betraying not only my parents but also the Uzumaki clan if you declare war on the empire out of some misguided attempt at revenge Gara's desert burial will look merciful compared to what the imperial nation can do you go to war with me I guarantee that Kanagakur will be nothing more than a memory the leaf will be nothing more but a rumor it will have never existed Yao scary Gara thought even Shikaku agreed with his tenant this one agrees note to self, do not piss the emperor off Anoki and Kuratsuchi both thought at the same time Anoki was glad that he had let the old hatred of the unnamed die it was known that his son was the leader of the west and that he hated Kanoha with a passion so long as the west honored the non-aggression pact then IWA had no problem with the empire lord Orochimaru will have to be notified of this Katsuragi thought impressive Namikai's may, thought his threat made clear Naruto's eyes went back to normal retrieving his had he placed it on his head as Hanada stood up turning to Mifune he said General Mifune on behalf of the Unified West we thank you for your hospitality Mifune nodded giving one more glare to Sonate and her bodyguards the Imperial group strode to the door but stopped oh I almost forgot Naruto said turning around he turned to Sana and nodded Sana produced six scrolls and tossed them to each of the Kages who caught them what's this Anoki asked not daring to open the scroll in two months the Unification Festival will take place Naruto explained the highlight of the festival is the Imperial Kumite which is held in South Ichiyama what you hold in your hands is an invitation to the tournament no Kage can participate bring four of your strongest shinobi and samurai to compete the winner of the tournament will earn 20 million Ryo for their respective village and the title of champion that invite you hold in your hands, also promises safe conduct through the Imperial Nation I'll be there. Tsunade said just to see the look on your face when we show that the will of fire is strong enough to crush any and all challengers including your own fighters the will of fire Naruto repeated Kanoa's will of fire no longer burns it has been extinguished by your hypocrisy your fear your bigotry and your hatred tell me something Senju did the leaf ever gain back any of those alliances that I earned for them during my time as a genin Tsunade's response was to glare at Naruto didn't think so Naruto said looking smug half of the people in the east don't trust you or Kanoha and for good reason it would be bad for business to hire a village known for rewarding potential traders and punishing heroes hopefully I will see you all in South Ichiyama the other Kages nodded and the imperial group walked out of the meeting chambers Naruto's smug grin never leaving his face Kanoha's downfall has begun time skip South Ichiyama unified western empire two months later following Naruto's appearance at the Kage summit and him delivering the invites to the Kages and Mifune Tsunade had returned to Kanoha and summoned the council to tell them of this recent development Sasuke Uchiha was the first to volunteer with Danza's backing Yuga Yuzuki and Asuma Sarutobi also signed on as his rehab would be finished by then and he would be placed back on active duty last was Sakura Haruno accompanying Tsunade and her team to South Ichiyama was Jiraiya and a representative from the fire. Demio South Ichiyama was one of the southern region's largest cities home to a thriving tourist industry the largest city in the southern region was home to several casinos geisha houses and even a brothel the city itself was built around a small mountain the mountain itself now the largest stadium on the continent it was also the site of the final battle of the unification wars and the site of where Naruto and Inada's forces had signed the treaty which ended the unification wars and had brought a new age to the west tiers point the memorial shrine built to honor the casualties of the unification wars was located three miles away from where the treaty was signed it was also the eve of the imperial cumite the annual tournament that the unified western empire held once a year the best of the best were invited to compete for honor wealth and prestige in the imperial nation it made the preliminary chunin tournament that kanoha had held during naruto and hanada's time as genin look like a schoolyard fight the Imperial Kumite was no holds barred anything goes jutsu and weapons were allowed bloodline based abilities were allowed and the Ichiyama Coliseum was specifically designed for that purpose Niji Hyuga and Rock Lee had fought in the Imperial Kumite the first time in the previous year suffice to say they both learned quick that the fighters played for keeps despite making it to the semi-finals Niji was defeated by a the year's previous champion and Rock Lee was beaten by Takashi Chiba this time around the former Rakage decided not to join in the fray but rather watch from the sidelines this year however the Kumite was different as this time the five major shinobi villages were invited to the tournament however the tournament had a secondary purpose as it had something to do with Operation Scorched Leaf that secondary purpose was the humiliation of Kanahagakur no Sado the Godemo Kage, Fire Country and last Sasuke Uchiha with this final humiliation Sasuke. 
would do his part and leave for Odogekir no Sado South Ichiyama was also the summer home of the emperor the imperial villa being the summer palace of the emperor and empress consort a good portion of the summer was spent in the southern region beginning at the tail end of the unification festival as Naruto and Inada inspected the Pekora merchant houses in the region and visited the villages it was half the size of the imperial complex but it was still spacious enough for the Namakase clan and their guests Naruto and Inada Namikaze had arrived in South Ichiyama a week earlier with their child Minato Hayashi Hyuga Hanabi Hyuga Niji and Tenten Hyuga also accompanied them along with little Izashi in the year following their arrival in the West Hayashi had became a respected member of the Imperial Council Hanabi had taken over as head of the Hyuga clan and was a powerful Kunoichi. In her own right it was even rumored that she was romantically involved with Takeshi Chiba Niji had became the commander of the military police assigned to protect Kimen and the surrounding areas his wife Ten Ten was a valued member of Yujito's Hellcats Hayashi and the council knew of Operation Scorched Leaf and had given Naruto and Hinata their full blessings on the matter aside from the occasional threat from Kanai the Kur and from the fire Demio they could do nothing when Sonate threatened to invade both Wave and Spring Naruto had retaliated by threatening to unleash their ration upon Kanahagakura shinobi if his father had killed 300 IWA shinobi in the last war then what would happen if he used the aeration with a couple of shadow clones imperial villa south Ichiyama nighttime although smaller than the imperial palace and Kimen the imperial villa was more than spacious enough to accommodate the extra guests aside from the Namakase family there were Naruto's in-laws and the Ino Shika Cho trio came to visit Haku tagging along with Ino Ino was competing in the Imperial Kumite as her opponent through Naruto's machinations was Sakura Haruno Shikamaru and Chuji were not competing this year Garas due to arrive tomorrow from what Tamari has told me Shikamaru said as they sat inside the courtyard Ino and Ten Ten were playing with Minato and Izashi the Godain will also be accompanied by representatives from the Wind Demio's council just in time for the start of the Kumite Naruto said just so you know Tsunade and the Kanoa fire group has arrived earlier today Ino continued Sasuke was among the group that and Asuma almost got into a fight with Okajima sensei when Asuma saw him with us I know Naruto replied the Tengu came to me to personally request that he would be the one to fight Asuma in the Kumite and I've granted it isn't this troublesome I mean stacking the deck against Kanoa on purpose. Shikamaru asked if I wanted to be unfair I would have the four devas compete in the tournament Naruto explained but there's the other four shinobi villages I really don't have to turn the odds in the west's favor inviting the other nations here is nothing more than an act of goodwill to show the naysayers that my intentions are genuine well that and the prize money is far too tempting to ignore Jiraiya has been seen sneaking around Ichiyama Hayashi said my guess is to check out the competition to see which of the fighters from here and from the other villages is a major threat to Kanoa winning one-year-old Minato gurgled while Anino's arms wouldn't put it past the perf to try and sneak in here Naruto said following the confrontation in Iron Country Jiraiya had found out through a contact of his in Spring Country that Koyuki was the godson to Naruto and Anata's child who was named after Kanoa's greatest hero Jiraiya was furious, as was Tsunade but they could no do anything as. Tsunade remembered Naruto's threat from the Kage summit if you wish to go to war I'll be more than happy to oblige you you are already on thin ice with me for betraying not only my parents but also the Uzumaki clan if you declare war on the empire out of some misguided attempt at revenge Gara's desert burial will look merciful compared to what the imperial nation can do you go to war with me I guarantee that Kanai the Kur will be nothing more than a memory the leaf will be nothing more but a Rumor it will have never existed Hayashi decided to change the subject so this is the city where you and Naruto had gotten married during the final battle when his daughter and son-in-law nodded he went on you know Minato proposed to Kushina in the midst of a skirmish with a group of nuke mean just as the last shinobi war had started I was there as I was your father's former teammate. Seeing as how the others were looking on in interest Naruto and Hinata nodded the emperor took Minato from Ino as. Hinata began to tell the story the baby gurgling as it took handfuls of his father's hair South Ichiyama was the final stronghold of the remaining three warlords Hinata began we had been fighting long and hard for two long years uniting the west South Ichiyama was the last winner takes all if we won the west would finally be at peace if we lost then the west would revert back to where we had found it when we arrived the three warlords Oborama and Joe were minor warlords but they combined their forces and fortified the city always before a battle Naruto would offer terms to his opponents the terms of surrender were generous as they had always been which was the main reason why we were successful to begin with, 
come to his side willingly and fight for a greater cause to bring peace to the lands Joe was the smart one he came to our side Oboa and Rama wanted a fight and we obliged the battle raged for three hours Naruto continued smiling both at his son who was now asleep and at the memory Oboa and Rama were holed up inside the stadium and we had the place surrounded it was Kurama Hanada Haku Zabuza and myself leading the charge flashback South Ichiyama the conclusion of the unification wars Naruto Namikaze and Hanada Hyuga were fighting back to back Naruto with his Okatana and Horatian Kunai's while Hanada had her by Kogan activated and Kukri knives in her hands nearby Zabuza Mamachi and Haku were fighting with members of Zabuza's Demon Brigade and Yujitoni teamed up with Kurama and taking down the enemy troops suddenly Naruto had a moment of inspiration fortune favors the bold as Suncher once told him he spun Hanada around slashing at a samurai with his oh katana Hanada marry me had this been at any other time Hanada would have squealed like a schoolgirl had she been a genin she would have fainted but they were in the middle of a heated battle one that would forever decide the fate of the west now this isn't the best time she shouted back are you kidding Naruto shot back blocking an incoming blade with his sword and stabbing the offending samurai with his kunai leaving it embedded in his throat now may be the only time I love you Hinata and I've made my choice what's yours Hinata's by Kogan deactivated she had admired Naruto for a long time and that admiration had turned to love following their banishment he believed in her and he loved her in return she loved him back Kurama Hinata, shouted to the red-headed woman Marius her nine fox tails waving around her body as if they had a life of their own Kurama had slashed her way through a group of shinobi even going as far as to impale them and fling their bodies away by using her tails I'm indisposed at the moment Naruto saw that Yujito was close by fighting on a raised platform alongside Zabuza Yujito he shouted taking Anata's hand Marius now now was Yujito's reply yes now Anata shouted impaling a shinobi with her cookery make it quick fine then Yujito shouted taking a minor break from the fighting with Zabuza backing her she conducted the impromptu ceremony as Naruto and Hinata continued to fight dearly beloved we are gathered here today to nail your asses to the wall Zabuza interrupted impaling his opponent with a head chopping cleaver before kicking him off the blade after hacking several shinobi into western kibble Naruto grasped Hinata's free hand again do you Hinata Hyuga take me to be your husband Hinata nodded eagerly yes awesome Naruto rejoiced right before planting a Rasengan into a shinobi attempting to attack Hanada from behind at the same time Hanada flung her remaining kukri into another samurai trying to cheap shot Naruto Naruto retrieved Hanada's kukri and tossed it back to her do you Naruto Namikaze Hanada began pausing to juke and strike a shinobi in the heart take me to be your wife for better or worse and in sickness and in health you mean with the last part about health being less likely Naruto replied I do great Hanada rejoiced as more Fighting ensued forcing the couple to fight back to back as Hellcat General Yujito concluded I pronounce you husband and she stopped as she caught a kunai from the air and tossed it back to the offending party killing her instantly you may kiss she attempted again but had to flip off the platform to avoid being attacked from the sides after dispatching the both of them with Zabuza's help she tried to speak again you may kiss once again. She was interrupted however Haku and his ice senbon had made the save on the ground below the fighting intensified as the body count around Naruto and Hinata grew Naruto having to create several some space using the Shinra Tensei blowing the attackers back this time Yujito and Zabuza turned to the young couple just kissed the former mist swordsman and the female Jinchuriki shouted Naruto grabbed Hinata with his free hand and pulled her close I owe you a real wedding after this is all over he said I'll hold you to that was Hinata's reply before they kissed end of flashback after the impromptu ceremony Naruto concluded we managed to rout the remaining forces Oboa and Rama saw that the fighting was futile and gave the order to stand down a week later they both formally surrendered promising not to raise arms against us with the declaration of surrender the unification wars were at an end a couple of days later Hinata and I had a formal private ceremony back in Kimen two weeks after that we were named emperor and empress consort of the west 1010 cradling as Ashi was amazed that was just wow was all she said Niji not at all say he seconded a wedding in the midst of battle that must have been something troublesome if you ask me Shikamaru said if Tamari finds out she'll probably demand why I did not propose to her the same way you did to Inada during the Akatsuki invasion Murasaki. Shibaku immortalized our wedding in her last novel Inada said you probably saw that scene in Koyoki's last film I thought that looked familiar Hayashi said a fan of the Spring Demio's films Naruto handed Minato to his grandfather if you excuse us Hayashi he said as he and Inada stood up Hayashi nodded as his son-in-law led his daughter out of the room out in the Imperial Villas Gardens Naruto enjoyed the South Ichiyama Naida's wife by his side it was times like these that he could forget 
that he was the emperor, or that he was a warrior he was just Naruto this is nice remember the last time we were here for the first anniversary and Zabuza got drunk and tried to hit on Sana Naruto asked the one where Suncher chased after him with his family swords screaming bloody murder I remember that the demon of Kimin being chased by a man twice his age Hinata replied have I ever told you that I'm pregnant Naruto shrugged his shoulders once he replied Hinata grinned and held up two fingers better make that twice love it then dawned on what Naruto was saying Hinata was pregnant again that's great he said as he picked her up and spun her around in the air before setting her down Minato will have either a brother or sister meanwhile sneaking into the imperial villa was easy enough for Jiraiya he was after all Kanoa's resident spymaster on Tsunade's orders he was to check around South Ichiyama and size up the competition from the other villages and the local fighters as well aside from the western fighters the main threat was one of the four devas who has decided to enter the contest the shogun of the violent lightning himself Reizu Heiate Okajima of which Asuma had a confrontation with earlier that day was number two his recon mission complete Jiraiya snuck into the imperial villa as Jiraiya had found out there were no guards no type of security whatsoever even the imperial complex was crawling with shinobi and samurai guards when Jiraiya and the others had came to Kimen. A year earlier the Imperial Villa had none probably because the Gaki doesn't think that anyone would not dare to break into his home Jiraiya thought as he watched Naruto and Hinata from his hiding place within the garden seriously what kind of ruler is he not to have any kind of protection then again Jiraiya had forgotten as to who he was dealing with what Jiraiya did not know was that the Imperial Villa had not only a squad of Imperial Guards on site but also a series of seals which served as a first response alarm to any intruders which is where Kurama steps and hey old man Jiraiya flinched as he felt a woman tap his shoulder cursing to himself at being caught he slowly turned around and found himself face to face with Kurama the bijou queen cracking her knuckles giving the one-armed pervert a feigned grin ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight Kurama asked just as she chambered her arm back and POW chakra powered fist met chin and Jiraiya was launched on impromptu Aerial tour of South Ichiyama from their spot in the gardens Naruto and Inata watched as Kurama emerged from the woods Naruto had knew that Jiraiya was there which was why he had sent Kurama out to intercept him so Naruto began where did you knock the old pervert to Kurama's grin grew as she gave them her answer the Blue Dragon Resort was a hot springs resort located in the outskirts of the city the Blue Dragon was originally a brothel before it had became a hot springs resort its owner a former madam who saw that tourism was more profitable than flesh of course that meant that the other brothels had more business coming their way but that was how business usually went the blue dragon was full to capacity with visiting dignitaries from throughout the region as with most of the inns and hotels the white destiny being reserved for the visiting kages and their shinobi from the east made to rumi kuratsuchi benisato mochizuki sana sancher yujitoni and kasumi ehara were gathered Around Murasaki Shikabu the West's most beloved writer of poems and romantic stories born Fujiwara Takako she had been born poor in the era before the arrival of Naruto and Inada at 15 she had gained the attention of a local warlord for her short stories and had gotten her a job in his court when she turned 19 she had married his son a samurai that was 16 years ago now her husband was a respected official responsible for maintaining order in the Shinoka region and she was a celebrated writer the empress consort was a huge fan of her work while she had got to meet spring demio kasahana who adopted some of her works into a couple of her films thanks to the emperor murasaki was well loved and respected by the people in the empire as murasaki entertained her company with a story from her childhood the moment was ruined when a white-haired one-armed toad sage came screaming from the skies landing in the waters with a splash having been forcibly ejected from the Imperial Villa via Kurama's fist when Jiraiya managed to crawl out of the water he felt the killer intent wash over him like a tsunami sure he had been caught peeping before and was belted with numerous wooden buckets instead he found himself facing one furious mazukage and irate blonde Jinchuriki her battle aura taking on the form of the two tails two royally pissed granddaughters of the Tsuchikage and the legendary samurai, respectively the latter already having drawn her sword one less than. Amused snake queen her snakes coiled around her body ready to strike and one angry rider as the angry women closed and Jiraiya could only whimper in response for the inevitable beatdown that was to come inside the imperial villa Shikamaru stopped in mid-drink and turned his attention elsewhere troublesome he said what what is it Hanabi asked I felt a disturbance the lazy Nara replied as if a man was screaming for mercy and was silenced I'd bet my mission salary that the bothersome bastard.
pissed off a woman or several Niji shrugged better him than a Shikamaru chuckled as he raised his cup I'll drink to that and another and somewhere in Ichiyama the sake cup in which Tsunade was drinking out of broke why do I have the strange feeling that Jiraiya had done something stupid again she thought back at the blue dragon the mangled broken body of Jiraiya was embedded in the rocks all he could manage to get out was Aoi, I heard he would be taken to the hospital and Tsunade would be. Notified of the incident as well as being billed for the damages Ichiyama Coliseum Ichiyama Coliseum was the largest of the Imperial Nation's arenas three times as big than the stadium Kanoha uses for its Chunin exams and as tall as a three-story building it was said that as the first Jinchuriki the six paths had built the arena out of a small mountain using the power of the ten tails and reinforced it with seals to anyone who had seen the stadium for the first time it was a mesmerizing Sight The interior of the Colosseum was an impressive sight surrounded by crystal blue water the arena itself a massive square platform held in place by four giant statues of the six path sage via stone chains the arena was accessible only by bridge then were retracted within the Colosseum's walls a series of triage centers were located Hanada's medic corps were on standby to tend to the injuries of the wounded fighters the imperial Cumite had 50 fighters with 20 of them from the east. Before heading out into the stands they had met with Anko Midarashi inside a meeting room underneath the stadium who was explaining the rules of the Imperial Kumite having herself competed in a couple of them as Anko explained the rules she ignored the Kanahagakura Shinobi knowing full well of the fate that was in store for them you all have signed the non-disclosure agreements in which you could not blame the Imperial Nation for what happens in the tournament this tournament is single round. Elimination The rules for the Kumite are simple. Full contact anything those weapons and jutsu are allowed any bloodline related abilities are allowed the matches are one on one and you can win by knockout submission knocking your opponent out of the arena and my personal favorite make your opponent say Matt Matt and IWA Shinobi paired it saying Matt is the same as saying Uncle Anko explain forcing your opponent to say Matt is too. The loser the most humiliating way to lose a match from his place Sasuke glared at Reizu who ignored him as if he was a bug good luck cause you're going to need it Anko finished and one more thing her face split into a maniacal grin try not to die at the northern end of the stadium was the booth reserved for the emperor and empress consort the imperial council and their guests taking up the top two rows of the coliseum the upper and lower sections of the massive booth had stairs for easier. Access the Kages of the East were present each of them dressed in their robes of state and their respective hats General Mifian was also present but had decided not to let several of his men compete Tsunade Senju was also present along with Jiraiya his remaining arm and a sling broken leg and a cast a neck brace around his neck and his jaw wired shut and a representative of the Fire Lord's court and several of his guardian ninja guarding the two Sanin were Karina Yuhi and Yamato unknown to. Tsunade and Jiraiya but known to Naruto and Inata Kabuto Yakushi was also present disguised as a member of the Rakage's personal guard Kabuto was there to keep an eye out on Sasuke and not to antagonize the Western Empire in any shape form or fashion Naruto was standing on the platform along with Hinata taking in the sights of the crowd absorbing the cheers of the crowd from the stands. The Kanoha group Sasuke Uchiha Asuma Sarutobi Sakura Haruno and Yuga Yuzuki tried to radiate as much as killed intent but the couple in the arena did not seem to notice Naruto raised one hand and the crowd instantly went silent using his chakra to amplify his voice Naruto began to speak it has been three long years since the beginning of a new era for all of us a new era of peace order and prosperity five years ago I was but a warlord with a dream that dream was to unite this land to bring about a peace which has not been seen since the time of my great ancestor the Rakuto Sanin through our blood sweat and tears we have made that dream into a reality through our hard work through our perseverance the unified western empire has thrived the audience erupted into cheers again naruto brought them into silence hanada spoke next we are honored to have with us the kages of the east as well as the representatives of their respective demios we hope that your experience here in the western empire is a pleasant one to the brave men and women who are competing in the imperial kumite mai Husband I wish you the best of luck you four are going to need it Naruto thought darkly as he glared at the Kanoha Shinobi his own Kage style hat hiding his face from view from this moment on this coliseum is now your battleground Hanada concluded let the Imperial Kumite begin the crowd once again erupted into cheers as Naruto and Hanada returned to their booth via Shunshin inside the booth sat the Imperial Council, the the five Kages and the representatives from the Demios also present was. 
Koyuki Kasahana, who was there alongside her husband the Kage of Spring Koichi Fujimura Koichi had originally been Koyuki's bodyguard following Cell 7's mission into what was Snow Country and had stepped down in order to become Kage of the village hidden in the snow of course they both agreed on that their children would have her last name Naruto and Inada appeared inside the booth and took their seats Minato, having been placed in Kurama's care was handed off to his mother from Kurama High. Must say my boy Anoki began you know how to work the crowd here it comes with practice Naruto replied Tsunade ignored the two men having rather decting to take a pull from a sake bottle down on the arena Kentaro Kagami and Zabuza Momochi were having an exhibition match in the form of a sword fight the demon of Kimin and the strong man of the scorched earth had a competitive yet fierce rivalry. Stemming back from the unification wars the imperial council and the five kages watched as the two. Swordsmen dueled to the delight of the crowd from the sidelines the Kanoha group watched the battle leaking killer intent to the four who were present in Suna during the Kanoha imperial conflict the former missed swordsman was the one who had killed Hitaki inside the booth the five kages and the imperial council watched as the fight intensified Zabuza has improved May noted back in mist he was so hot-headed and rash I think spending time in the west has done him some good don't worry Naruto replied he's still the sociopath you come to know and respect and in fact the only one who can match him is Anko come to think of it I think that Zabuza is quite the masochist on the other side sat the Godame Kazakage of Sunagara I believe congratulations are in order he said Matsuri has told me the new Sanada is pregnant again I should be congratulating you as well as it appears that your wife is also expecting Naruto replied out on the arena the battle ended in a standoff Zabuza and Kentaro's Respective blades resting against the other's throats the crowd erupted in cheers as both men took several steps back and bowed to one another before vanishing via Shunshin so how long is the Imperial Kumite may ask that continues until a champion is crowned Naruto said it was the previous year's champion Zabuza was the previous year's champion and you or Inada don't compete Katsuragi asked no we do wanna keep it fair Inada, replied my husband and I don't compete in the tournament neither do. The visiting leaders of the villages the Imperial Kumite is designed to promote healthy competition and goodwill within the Empire whoever wins the Imperial Kumite is named champion but cannot compete in the next year's Kumite they have to wait until the year is up before competing again as Hanada and Naruto explained how the Kumite worked Jiraiya and Tsunade settled back in their seats thinking that the Leaf had the tournament, in the bag given that they had the last Uchiha a former guardian. Ninja the vice commander of the ANBU Black Ops unit and the feral Inazuka they were complacent in their superiority just you wait Gaki Tsunade thought darkly Kanoha will come out on top in the Imperial Kumite and watching you admit that Kanoha is the strongest village in the east will be so sweet as the tournament progressed Kanoha had advanced through the first round but it had not been easy as Suma Sarutobi had eliminated a fighter from IWA Sasuke Uchiha had defeated a low ranking Imperial. Samurai Sakura Haruno used her chakra enhanced super strength to knock an imperial ninja out of the ring Yugao Yuzuki managed to eke out a win by using the dance of the crescent moon on a mist shinobi as Tsunade and the others watched Kuratsuchi of IWA 2 of May's mist shinobi and Tamari of Suna had also advanced through the tournament on the empire's side where Ino Yamanaka Hellcat members and Miko Hamira and Tenten Hyuga Rezu of the violent lightning also made it through the tournament as did. Hey 8 Okajima his only intention for fighting was to pound Asuma Sarutobi into the ground Rock Lee was defeated by Niji who in turn was beaten by Reizu Sasuke had succeeded in knocking Mist out of the competition much to May's dismay so ended day 1 of the Imperial Kumite at one of South Ichiyama's training grounds Sasuke Uchiha was going through a kata with his Chikudo he was alone as the others from Kanoha were back at their hotel Sonade and Jiraiya had went to a bar to drink and plan for. The next day there was no plan Sasuke had deduced he was in the Dobe's backyard and by winning the Imperial Kumite he would give his former teammate a serious black eye that would be the first he would prove to the Empire that the Uchiha was superior then he would pay the Dobe back for killing Itachi. And Hinata Sasuke thought darkly she knows how to carry herself in battle she's even stronger than that weakling Haruno I will break her in front of the Dobe he is not worthy of being the ruler of. These people I will take his throne and the empire will bear the rebirth of the Uchiha trouble sleeping Sasuke Uchiha Sasuke spun around Chikudo ready to impale the offending person dumb enough to intrude on his training Kabuto still dressed as one of Katsuragi's bodyguards emerged from the 
Shadows unmasked the Wang Sasuke to see his face then again if I found out that my former teammate was the ruler of an empire I would have trouble sleeping as well he said so you know about that Sasuke sniped as he went back to his training I did not know until after the Akatsuki invaded Suna Kabuto explained I was there on Lord Orochimaru's orders when the Akatsuki came, but he has known about the empire for quite some time I was also there when the Akatsuki invaded and fought under the guise of Asuna Jounin if the dead last and insecure heiress could not only do that much damage to the leaf then the leaf is severely lacking in training Sasuke remained silent it goes to show that sometimes the dead last can surprise you Kabuto continued noticing how Sasuke's grip on the Chikudo was getting even tighter look at Jiraiya he was the dead last on his team now he is one third of the legendary San Nin although now he is missing an arm but still Sasuke turned around what do you want Kabuto he asked icily nothing just stopped by for a friendly chat and to check up on your progress Kabuto continued ironic don't you think the dead last stopped you the last time you tried to come to our side and what did that get him a one-way ticket out of Kanoha now look at him emperor of the western empire while you on the other hand despite being trained by the late copycat Ataki and the warhawk well to put it politely you are stagnating in Kanoha despite wielding the Majenkyu as much as you don't want to hear this Uchiha Naruto is stronger than you in response Sasuke tried to cleave Kabuto in two but found himself splitting the log in two instead did I touch a nerve Sasuke Kabuto's voice rang out from the trees you can do much more you can learn more under the best of the legendary San Nin you can learn how to better control your seal Lord Orochimaru's offer is still open to you Sasuke Uchiha with that he was gone leaving Sasuke alone with his thoughts Kabuto did have a point in the seven years following Uzumaki's banishment he was pardoned for his attempted defection but it came with a price Sasuke and all of Kanoha had underestimated the influence that the dead last turned emperor had on the people he had met in the seven years following the Dobe's banishment he had been out of fire country only twice both times he and Cell 7 had been attacked by rival shinobi he had been placed under what he saw was virtual house arrest as a result Kabuto was right about another Thing Kanoha had gotten weak in the years following Uzumaki's banishment had the fact that four of its clans had defected to the west and Suna had now taken Kanoha's spot as the strongest of the village Sasuke's opinion of the leaf had plummeted even further and Uchiha values strength above all things his father had told him the strong leads while the weak follows that is the Uchiha way Sasuke's patience in regards to Kanoha was running thin Orochimaru's offer was looking more attractive than Ever day 2 of the Imperial Kumite the tournament continued with the semi-finals Asuma Sarutobi had knocked off another IWA Shinobi leaving Kuratsuchi Sasuke Uchiha had trouble with his latest opponent but had powered on through with a Chidori to the chest thankfully his opponent had survived the assassination Jutsu then came Ino her opponent was Sakura Haruno in a rematch from their Chunin exams back when Naruto and Hinata were both Gen and both women were medic means and both were trained. Under San Nin while Sakura remained in Kanoha unable to travel as the impromptu death sentence extended to her as well given that she was also a member of Cell 7 Ino had far exceeded Hanada's expectations as a medic Nin combined that with Okajima's training and Ino had made a name for herself as a highly skilled Kunoichi Ino didn't even need to use her mind transfer jutsu she simply manipulated Sakura around the arena and sidestepped her former friend Sakura fell face first into the water. And Ino had won the match by ring out then came Asuma Sarutobi who had the bad luck of being pitted against the Ino Shika chose new sensei Hayate Okajima Asuma Sachirobi of Kanahagakura and Osato vs Hayate Okajima of Shinzoku Fighters to the arena Hayate Okajima and Asuma Sarutobi entered the arena Okajima was clad in his shinobi uniform and was in the process of securing his Tengu mask. On his face from the booth Tsunade had a grin on her face as she watched Asuma enter the arena looks like Mai. Luck is turning brat she addressed Naruto Asuma is fighting so is Okajima Naruto noted Hey, Okajima is not only a member of my council and minister of shinobi affairs but he is also a cunning and ruthless strategist his intellect is rivaled by the Nara he is also a master of the silent kill only the Chiba and the Hyuga could match him in Taijutsu there is a difference between playing bodyguard to a Demio and fighting in a war Senja the son of the Sandame is in for one tough fight why the Tengu mask mate asked I asked Okajima the same thing Naruto said he just told me that he just liked wearing it I just left it at that on the arena floor Okajima cracked his neck muscles and stood there sizing up the former sensei of the Ino Shika Cho trio Asuma pulled out his trench knives and channeled chakra into them he saw that Okajima did not have an ninjato on him and soon discovered why on his forearms and hands were clawed gauntlets the fingers ending in sharpened claws he could have. 
taken the easy way out and asked the Inoshika Cho as to how Asuma fought but decided against that idea Asuma gripped his knives even tighter even without being able to properly pull off Jutsu Asuma was still a battle-hardened warrior under the Godame's command fighters ready and Go Asuma did not waste any time lunging forward with a front snap kick of which Hei swatted to the side the spinning back kick was also knocked aside the former guardian ninja and the Tengu moved in Asuma punching and slashing with his trench knives kicking up sparks as he attempted to use the flying swallow to break through Okajima's defenses kicking up sparks as his trench knives made contact against Okajima's chakra covered gauntlets Asuma took a step back in order to avoid the punch to the face but Okajima did not let up the Tengu scored the first blow an open palm strike to the face which left an angry red mark on Asuma from the booth the Inoshika Cho watched the fight they knew that Asuma was good, but their de facto sensei was even better it was Shikamaru who explained Okajima's motives Okajima sensei is feeling Asuma out he explained to Ino and Chuji who was eating a bag of chips once he's done that then he will go in for the kill Kurinai had heard Shikamaru's comment and grew worried Asuma could not pull off any jutsu which involved hand seals as he was still going through rehab over that after all Shikamaru continued, he did the same to us when he took us under his wing don't. Remind me Ino said shuddering we learned more under Okajima sensei than Asuma down in the arena Asuma had soothed and tagging Okajima with several powerful blows but Okajima had been hit with a whole lot worse he ignored the pain and the fight began to turn in his favor what made the fight even more exciting was that Okajima master of ninjutsu was not using any jutsu for the match he simply relied on taijutsu to beat Asuma, within an inch of his life two kicks to the sternum forced Asuma up. Against the stone chains there Hei proceeded to pummel him with a barrage of punches elbows and kicks Asuma tried to defend against the onslaught but it was no use after 20 seconds of non-stop pummeling Okajima stopped and Asuma bloodied and bruised slumped to a seated position blood seeping from his mouth and from a cut to the head this match was over Hei turned to the proctor call the match he said the winner Hei ate Okajima the crowd cheered as Okajima made his exit via Shunshin and reappeared in the booth ignoring the angry looks of Kurinai and the others Okajima took his seat and removed his gauntlets from his hands the gauntlets stained with Asuma's blood your man is still alive Okajima said not looking in Tsunade's direction as he addressed her and Kurinai the infirmary is at the south end of the stadium first underground level you're more than happy to check on him there Kurinai looked at Tsunade who gave her consent with a nod with a glare to both Okajima and Naruto Kurinai disappeared in a shunshin from his seat Naruto chuckled Yamato leveled his own spooky glare which had scared Naruto in his youth but Naruto responded with his own thousand yard stare causing Yamato to flinch and back down. As a result the next match was Yugao Yuzuki against Hellcat member Miko Amura having seen Yugao use the dance of the crescent moon Miko knew what to expect she countered the move by dispelling the clones used for the jutsu and disarmed Yujito the vice commander of the ANBU had no other choice but to concede defeat with Yugao out of the tournament Sasuke Uchiha remained the Uchiha prince managed to knock Kuratsuchi out of the ring Tamari won against Ino but lost to Reza thus putting both Suna and IWA out of the tournament that left the Uchiha and two Imperial Warriors ready to tear him limb from limb even Tsunade knew that Sasuke's chances of getting out of this tournament in one piece were nil the Emperor held all the cards and it pissed Tsunade off to no end Miko Amura seeing that Reizu wanted to fight Sasuke had forfeited her place in the tournament citing chakra exhaustion Naruto had made sure that she would be reimbursed for time served in the tournament which led to this Moment final round Sasuke Uchiha of Kanahagakura and Osato vs Reizu of the Violent Lightning Fighters to the arena Sasuke used a shunshin to teleport to the ring while Reizu strode in the red and gold armor glistened in the afternoon sun as the shogun of the Violent Lightning faced down his last opponent Reizu remembered his emperor's orders for him when the time came for him to face the arrogant Uchiha crush him, if he made Sasuke say mat then it would be a bonus the Uchiha smirked as he Watched his opponent your road ends here Reizu here is where I will prove to the dobe and his whore that I am better than him by beating you then he will be next and the west will see that I am the elite of the elites Reizu simply responded by cracking his knuckles before switching hands and repeating the motion then you have no problem in showing me that you are an elite Uchiha please be a suitable challenge for me unlike your late brother whom the emperor had killed Sasuke unsheathed his. Chikudo just as the proctor shouted fighters ready and go lightning danced around Reizu as he assumed his stance let the thunder roll he mused Sasuke started the match by flinging several kunai at Reizu who merely batted them out of the way but Sasuke hoped that it would distract him long enough for him to move in and use his sword but Reizu was faster and unsealed his own weapon. A metal staff aside from his lightning release Reizu was a prodigy in bojutsu of which Sasuke would soon find out the 
crowd roared its approval as Chikudo and Bo clashed Rezu calmly parried Sasuke's thrusts and swings from his place inside the booth Kabuto nodded in approval Sasuke has improved but Rezu is playing with him he looked at the emperor from the corner of his eye Naruto does not look like he is worried could this be a setup to humiliate the Uchiha I wonder in the arena Rezu moved to the side in order to avoid Sasuke's sword thrust his fist bounced off the back of the Uchiha's skull knocking him to the ground I got to say that this is the most fun I had in a while it's good to compete in such tournaments as it keeps you sharp said the lightning master Sasuke got back to his feet and retrieved his Chikudo glaring at the smug Reizu who was balancing his staff on one shoulder he charged and the fight resumed Sasuke then felt the air rush out of his lungs as Reizu slammed his fist into his torso forcing him down to one knee you know what your greatest sin is Uchiha Reizu asked your pride for all your talk and proclaiming your greatness you are merely hiding behind your Sharingan and your name living in the shadow of your older brother shut up Sasuke shouted back you know nothing oh but I do Reizu replied as he and Sasuke locked weapons I know about you and the chief being on the same cell when the both of you were younger that Ataki had given you every single jutsu that you could ask for the chief and the lady were very honest about their past the chief has his flaws as does his wife but he got to where he is at because of hard work unlike you the chief does not proclaim his superiority just because he is a descendant of the six paths he did not use his ancestry to get to where he is he did not use his renegade as a crutch for that reason does he earn my respect you compare me to that dope sasuke see that i am an uchiha i am also a descendant of the six paths i do raise a replied and sorry to bust your bubble but neither the uchiha nor the senju are not the direct descendants of the six path sage the very first jinchuriki of whose power was this stadium was built your clan ancestor and those of the senju merely were trained by him and rode on his coattails to make their family line even more illustrious you think you had it bad given that your nut job of a brother exterminated your clan try growing up without parents the chief came out just fine you are seriously fucked in the head shut up sasuke shouted breaking the hold but before he could counterattack reizu thrust his staff forward catching Sasuke in his shoulder Sasuke's screams echoed through the Colosseum as a shock of electricity coursed through his veins giving the audience a nice view of what his skeleton looked like oh suck it up Uchiha Reizu sniped as Sasuke dropped his Chikuto I barely touched you he turned to the proctor call the match this round has no more fight left in him Sasuke's eyes shifted into the Majenku as she spun upon Reizu no this fight is not over yet he screamed as he went through several hand seals Chidori Reizu smirked as Sasuke used the power of the cursed seal to give him an extra boost in speed how in the world can an assassination jutsu can create such a racket he thought as Sasuke beard down on him Reizu's hand balled into a fist as he produced the counter for such an inferior technique Rajink in the lightning fist was Reizu's signature technique it was delivered in one of two ways a straight punch to the face or a rising uppercut as Sasuke found out he was struck with the ladder the blow had knocked him seven feet into the air with Reizu soon following after him adding insult to injury by using the lion combo of which Sasuke had stolen from Rock Lee during the Chunin exams his foot slamming the Uchiha into the stone arena the Rajinkan had made Sasuke's chakra control and his nervous go haywire which was more than enough time for Reizu to put the final nail in the coffin a kick to the torso followed by Reizu rolling Sasuke over on his stomach pinning him to the arena with one knee and Sasuke's arm painfully wrenched behind his back I want to hear it Reizu shouted say it Sasuke knew what Reizu wanted him to say but Sasuke was not going to say it to say that five letter word would be the ultimate humiliation even for him when Sasuke hesitated in his answer Reizu responded by applying even more pressure onto his arm threatening to break it should Sasuke not give and say it Uchiha Reizu demanded say it so that everyone can hear faced with Leaving the empire with a broken arm Sasuke conceded defeat Matt 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 satisfied Reizu released Sasuke's arm and moved away from him as the crowd cheered the winner and champion of the imperial Kumite Reizu the announcer declared inside the booth Naruto grinned while Tsunade was slamming her fist on the reinforced arm of her chair swearing up a storm while Jiraiya and Yamato looked pissed the Ino Shika Cho cheered for the newest champion Katsuragi Garanoki and May had looks of satisfaction on their faces as to how the tournament had played out in the arena Sasuke's eyes morphed into the Majenku as he scrambled over to his Chikudo his intention clear he was going to rob the empire of its champion Sasuke activated the Katana and charged intending on impaling Reizu from behind Reizu simply responded by performing a lightning shunshin and Sasuke passed where Reizu once stood moments earlier Sasuke had to skid to a stop as he found himself close to the arena's edge upon reappearing Reizu took the opportunity to give his dishonorable opponent a final indignity he booted Sasuke off the arena and into the water it had gotten a real good laugh. 
from the crowd and that laughter increased as Sasuke dragged himself out of the water and stomped out of the arena humiliated beyond belief in the booth Sanade was torn between knocking Sasuke's head off for his attempted cheap shot from behind while at the same time wanting to die following the humiliation that Sasuke and by extension Kanoha had suffered through his actions Kanaga Kuronosato three weeks later Sasuke Uchiha was not very happy his grand debut in the Empire's Imperial Kumite had been a big failure the team that Tsunade had assembled was a big failure he had not only lost but had been thoroughly humiliated by Reizu and by extension Naruto even worse Kanoha and Fire Country had to pay a huge indemnity due to Sasuke's attempted murder of Reizu or face invasion from the Western Empire word had spread fast about how Sasuke not only lost but as to how he had tried to spear the champion of this year's Imperial Kumite in the back with his Kadorgatana one thing that Sasuke absolutely hated aside from Naruto was the fact that he was looked down upon as a joke as an afterthought upon returning to Kanoha he had kept to himself unless summoned by Danzu's opinion on Tsunade and her super pervert of a teammate had sank even lower the idea of leaving Kanoha for greener pastures namely Otogekure was more frequent in his mind he had closed himself off from the others save for Danzu, as he answered to him he was to be seen as a hero as one who had beaten the best that the Empire had to offer but that backfired in the most extreme way still thinking evil thoughts as he entered the Uchiha district he entered his home the two black books were placed on his nightstand inside his bedroom they were out of place as Sasuke did not own books with black binders on them further inspection showed that the books in question were black ops books detailing every single black ops mission that had taken place in Kanagakura, under the Hokage's and Danzu Shimura curiosity. Getting the better of him Sasuke sat down on the edge of the bed and began to read and Sasuke's anger grew as he discovered the truth behind the Uchiha incident of how it was ordered by the Sandame himself with the backing of Danzu Shimura and the two deceased council elders in order to thwart his father's attempts at a coup of how the Kanoha civilian council had planned on turning the Sharingan into a weapon in order to make Kanoha, the strongest of the villages last he read about Danzu and his hidden arm containing the Shodames Mokutan and the harvested Sharingans not to Shursui's Sharingan hidden behind those bandages as well as his now failed plans in regards to Naruto and his new plans in making Sasuke the perfect weapon while at the same time subjugating him to serve Kanoa's will even worse was that Tsunade herself signed off on the order in the Black Ops book for the Okage. If Sasuke was made before he was outright furious his life was not his own as bloodline had been stolen by those who did not deserve it he had been played by the Hokage and the civilian council the path to him was now clear Sasuke Uchiha had left the village shortly before dawn but not before sending Kanoha a message first he had spent most of the night sneaking into the homes of the civilian council and executed the council members Sakura's mother the head of the Kanoha merchants guild was among the casualties as Sakura was working at the hospital at the time she was spared his wrath Sasuke thought about killing Danzu and Tsunade but decided against it but he did however kill the Suma Saratobi as he was on his way home from his rehab ambushing him and leaving his body inside one of Kanoa's alleys thus making Karinai a widow by the time the alarm was raised Sasuke Uchiha was halfway to Odogekir furious Tsunade and Danzu had ordered a joint retrieval mission to bring the Uchiha back however Orochimaru had anticipated this and had reacted he unleashed the revived sound. 4 and 200 Odo Jounin upon the 20-man retrieval team only three members of the retrieval team sent by Tsunade Kiba Inazuka and root operatives Torian Aburame and Fu Yamanaka survived to return with the bad news the Uchiha retrieval mission 2 was a complete failure Sasuke Uchiha had successfully defected to Orochimaru the fire Demio's response was instant Sasuke Uchiha was declared AS class missing Nin and traitor to both the leaf and fire country wanted for the murders of Asuma Sarutobi and the civilian members of the Kanagakura Civilian Council Otogekure Rice Country Welcome to my humble home Sasuke Uchiha Orochimaru greeted from his throne as Sasuke entered the room having been led inside by Kabuto I am pleased to see that you have taken up my offer he turned to Kabuto what of the retrieval team sent by the leaf with the exception of three all are dead Kabuto replied good very good the snake Sanin said you have made the right choice in coming here to Otogekure Sasuke I have heard about your performance in the Imperial Kumite as well as the incident in Suna regarding your former teammate although I am rather surprised to find out that the dead last is now the Emperor I can care less about the dope Sasuke snapped I want only one thing aside from the power that you promised me oh and that is burn Kanoha to the ground Sasuke replied destroy everything Tsunade Danza everything Kanoha has betrayed my clan and tried to make me into their personal weapon. 
Naruto and the Empire can wait I know the Leafs' strengths and weaknesses with the loss of four of their clans and most of their experienced John and Kanoa is weak I cannot serve a village that is weak yes Orochimaru leaned back in his seat I believe we will get along just fine Sasuke just fine Imperial Complex Kim and several days later the scroll from the Empire's intelligence division was delivered to Naruto in an Otis office, inside the House of Sovereigns by a member of said division the Scroll was a week old, but it contained something that Naruto wanted to hear ever since returning to Kanoa to plant the incriminating evidence of the two Black Ops books he had stolen months earlier inside of Sasuke's home Naruto read the scroll with Hinata reading over his shoulder Sasuke Uchiha defected from the leaf fire Demio has placed Uchiha in the bingo book ASAS class missing ninja, and for the murders of the Kanagakura civilian council and Asuma Sarutobi I have to say that I am. Very impressed Hanada acknowledged one thing about the Uchiha her husband replied he is so predictable although killing off the civilian council and Asuma was something that I was not expecting it's still a nice bonus so what do we do now Hanada asked we wait Kanoa's days are numbered Naruto replied the leaf has sown the wind now it will reap the whirlwind and when the time comes for the leaf to fall I will be there to put the nail in their coffin.